First, thank you uh, to the Birmingham Change Fund. Uh, I have the opportunity to travel around the country from time to time. And I gotta be honest with you, I mean, a bunch of brothers and sisters are always talking. I was trying to hit me up with a car. Yo, brother, you know, if you could just put me on, I was, I was, you know, I used to be on TV too back in the day. <laughs> they're always trying to go for an angle. I've been in so many places where I hear people singing Negro spirituals and trying to harken back to another time, and all that does is put me to sleep. But that you young professionals have decided to take the bull by the horns and make a change for real, not just change like pocket change, but real change. I get the analogy there. You know what I'm saying? He said, you know what I'm saying? He's supposed to say, yeah. He said, true that. So thank, thank you so much for bringing me back. Thank you so much for bringing me back. Uh, thank you uh, to the hotel for uh, proving that you can't have air conditioner on in December. I didn't realize that was possible. It definitely works. Any question, and, and I cursed the person who made that peach cobble because it was ridiculously good. <laughs> you know, it, it, they say tis the season. Y'all put the superintendent behind that very large and pretty. <laughs> but you take my seat, I'm about to leave after this. Because <laughs> I'm feeling some kind of way today. But, you know, we remember certain certain times of year, we remember things that take us back, and, and I. I, I this year, at this time, today, uh, really last night, um, and brought back to last year this time, uh, a Christmas miracle of sorts. Um, where uh, yesterday I received a, uh, an email. And there are a couple of people who are trying to get me to not work at my school anymore. Um, they want me to do other things. They think it's time for me to do something other than run a uh, school, or a couple of schools that I work to. And so they're very, very kind, and they'll, you know, uh, send emails and have other people contact me. And so um, yesterday evening, they, um, because they haven't filled the position, a state contacted me and asked me to consider running uh, the school system for, the, for that very large state. And I sent back an email as quick as they sent that, saying, you know, I, that's really cool. I just left my girls' basketball game. We lost last night. I feel really bad right now. So I'm going to stay here until we get our girls' basketball team right back together. Um, and and it, it takes me back to last year, uh, to Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve was on Thursday last year. And I know that because Thursday is a work day, typically. And so I did what I typically do on work days, which is I went to work. Um, I went into to the office because it just feels like I'm supposed to. Like when I was. In undergrad, I was always supposed to go to the financial aid office when I was on campus. <laughs> so one time I went back and visited, and I just found myself walking right towards the financial aid office. <laughs> so on um, December 24th, I went to the office, and I uh, did some work. And then I went uh, home. And uh, when I got home, I received a text, a very cryptic text, from a very, very well-known educator. Uh, one of the most well known in the country. And it was very like cloak and dagger. Said, um, do not say no, just listen. And so I said, okay. And so then he said, a phone call will come in 45 minutes. So you gotta like white people, work with white people. <laughs> 45 minutes. <laughs> So the uh, question was, would I consider to take over a pretty large school system? And uh, I said I wouldn't say no. So I, you know, I said let me let me come down and meet with the mayor and, and people from the state, and I'll, I'll take a look. So in the meantime, I went upstairs, and uh, these calls come more often than I feel comfortable because I always feel bad saying no because I really feel like being the principal. I just do. Um, and so I, uh, I went upstairs and I was on the phone and I was talking to a brother I'm really cool with. He, his name is Yusuf and he and I were talking and um, all of a sudden I heard this bellowing, horrifying scream in my house. <coughs> Unlike I've ever heard before. And it was my oldest son who's nine. 
He was screaming and screaming and screaming, and my wife was screaming behind him, and I didn't know what it was. So I jumped up. When I jumped up, the phone just went up. It just exploded. Like it just went up against the wall, just broke into it, whatever, whatever piece. I ran downstairs. My wife was holding my uh, then five year old son. He was lifeless. He stopped breathing. <coughs> And so I, I went to, um, to her, and, and, I, and I said, well, you know, give me the boy. And, and my, my oldest son is just screaming, screaming, I'm not going to have a little brother. I'm not going to have a little brother. I'm not. I mean, it's Christmas right in front of the tree. It's got all the presents in it. And it's just, just a couple hours away from the whole thing. And, you know, they talk about how your life flashes in front of you at certain times. And you start to think of all these things. And you don't think about all the good things you've done. You think about all the things you should have done. And then there you know there's a list. And I'm, they're going through my head. And the one thing that keeps coming up is all the times I've been away from the house. Every plane I've been on, every car I've been in, every time I've been at work long and I said I was going to, the third and fourth phone call I said, I promise I'm, I'm coming home right now after I finish this. All those things just go through your mind, and, and, and it doesn't seem to make sense. It seems like, well, if, if, if I did all that, and now this is it, then what, what will I have? What did all those things get me? So as my son later, I began to perform CPR. And uh, it, I'd never done it before. I'd never done it before. And so I, as I pushed and blew and you know, trying to remember who I remembered from senior year in high school when you had to take it in order to graduate. Um, all I could think about were all these, were all these things. And you know, I'm not a terribly religious person, but at right about that time, you get pretty religious. Right about that time, you get pretty religious. So as I as I did that, I, um, my, my my wife is on the phone. She's calling 911, and she she just is screaming. It's just it's just noise on top of noise, and I'm trying to quiet it right down. And all of a sudden. And so I'm, I'm pushing and I'm blowing, I'm pushing and I'm blowing. I'm just saying, God, please, get this little boy up. I will never leave unless I actually have to. I will, I will be here every single day. I will do everything I can. But please get him off this floor. I pushed and blew and pushed and blew. And then I swear to you as if it was a miracle. My son, five years old, pushed me off of him. Almost a 200 pound man. He pushed me off over the strength of a grown man to the point that I moved back. And his name is Walker. And I said, Walker. And his eyes closed again. And then I said, so we go back on, and I'm, you know, I'm because I'm I'm a speaker, right? That's what I do. I run a school, I talk to people, I'm supposed to motivate people. That's what I'm supposed to be able to do. And I know there are different ways to motivate people. You can motivate them on something positive, you can Negative, you know, it's whatever the motivation. I'm trying to motivate right now because the blowing thing ain't going so well. And and so I said to him, I said, you know, Daddy spoke to Santa Claus. And he knows what you got. And he's scaring your mother. If you just wake up. And and he became he came to and just he started to come to us blowing and he pushes off and I said, I'm blowing your mom one more time, you better wake up. Comes in, paramedics come in, they get us. I'm in house, right? So I, it's, it, we have real ones up there, so I put some high shorts on in the house. So when the ambulance comes, they don't ask me, you know, if you're changing to this stuff. You just put on what you put on, so I put it on. Ran out, I'm out the house in shorts and in the back of the car. And, and, and you get to a point, I got to a point where I realized that it, it, I can't just come down a place and just talk. I'm not here to just talk to y'all. Just to say that you've been invited to something. You've been invited to something. Doesn't do anything good to have any conversation. Money is not going to change the things that we have here. My son had a seizure, yeah, what they call a seizure, where his temperature went up too fast. He lost consciousness. So I'm here, and I'm going to fly back right after this. So I don't miss too much. So I flew all the way down from Hartford, and I'm going to fly all the way back in a little while right after I finish here, because I don't want to miss too much. I don't want to miss too much. But by the time I have here, we gonna compensate. <laughs> and those little fires on your on your tables ain't gonna be the only fire that we have in here. So I hope one of your pencil suits and all the other things y'all got going on you 
we're ready to have a conversation. Because I've seen too many children done wrong by too many systems, and I have to tell you that I can't believe, you can't convince me that Birmingham's children are less intelligent than other people's kids. Over Jefferson, you have one of the top schools in the country. The IB school over there was 2005, the number one school in the United States of America. Y'all ain't got one on here. Are you prepared to tell me a visitor to your town for the third time that your kids are just not as smart? Really? Are you prepared to accept that in some way, shape, or form, the fact that the FBI, which rates crime, rates Birmingham a 9 out of 10, Alabama a 5, the U.S. a 4? Do your people just grow up different? Are they just born with something wrong with them? I, I don't think so. You know, uh, Voltaire, a, a 16th century philosopher, said that if in times such as these, if you didn't, if there were not a God, you'd invent one. You don't need a God on this one. You just need regular people who have had enough with a failed system, who have said enough is enough, who have paid too many teachers not to teach, too many principals not to be able to run a school. I am not here to make friends with grown people. I don't even really like grown people that much. <laughs> You're aggravating. You're just hard to work with. Kids are much easier to deal with. You understand? It's just a whole different situation. And, and when you understand that the reason why the school's failing because they're designed to fail, you have to ask yourself, who are the designers? Who are the architects? Who are the people who are benefiting from the system? Depending upon who you ask, if you ask the uh, officially published results from Birmingham's public schools, you graduate 83% of your kids white, 80% black. Okay. If you look at the shock report, you graduate 42% of your African American boys and 60% of your white boys. Whatever you look at, I have to believe that you wouldn't be in the situation you're in. I wouldn't have driven by some of the homes that I drove by on the north side if the educational system was working. See, it's a system. That means it comes with many parts, not just one person. It's not a superintendent system. It's not a one principal system. It's a system. And the circumstances that created this are in place, and they're in place because of 